All right, guys, I got to run. See if I can get him. He's coming out of open water. All right, got some many strip and drag. Might be a good fish. I don't know, guys. Might be a good one. He's fighting hard. Oh, yeah, it's a nice one. Yeah, nice one, guys. Yeah, good jump. Oh, yeah. Nice bass. Oh, yeah, it's a real nice bass, guys. Oh, yeah. Real nice bass. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's barely hooked. He's barely hooked. Get his rod out of the way here. Come here, come here, baby. 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 Let me get you. Get you. Got her. All right, guys. I think that fish is over 10. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <sighs> hey, guys. CC Corey here. Every year I have fishermen come up to me and ask me, CC, what is the best tackle I should use for shiner fishing for trophy bass? What are the best rods, reels, lines, hooks, etc.? Well, in this episode, I'm going to show you. So y'all stay tuned. I'm Captain CC Corey. Come with me and experience some of the most action-packed and adrenaline-filled fishing that North and Northeast Florida has to offer. We fish for everything from huge bass in freshwater to monster tarpon in saltwater and everything in between. If you like seeing awesome jumps, if you like the sound of a screaming drag, gosh, man. If you like seeing big fish, well, you just might have found your channel. So sit back, relax, if you can, and let's see what we can hook into today with the North Florida Angler. All right, guys, starting off, you need a good rod and reel. I actually prefer uh, bait casting equipment over spinning. Now there's some guides and fishermen out there that like to use spinning tackle, but I just feel like uh, bait casting equipment works a lot better. Uh, I use a lot of underhand pitch casting when I'm fishing around uh, logs and brush and I'm fishing float and cover. And uh, with bait casting equipment, you can just drop that, that shiner right on a dime and you can lay them down really gently. And uh, bait casting equipment really works well for that. Spin and tackle, it's a little more difficult. You have to kind of feather the line down with your left hand as you cast it. It's not quite as accurate. Um, also, um, I feel like you have a little bit more power and leverage with bait casting equipment compared to a spin and tackle. Now, sometimes I will use spin and tackle if I'm stuck with a bunch of really tiny shiners around three inches long because they're too small for me to cast with uh, bait casting gear. But that's rare, you know, and uh, those are certain, very few uh, circumstances, situations that I, that I have to do that. But bait casting equipment is where I think you'll do your best. Now, the rod. I like a rod that's at least seven foot in length. I like a rod that has uh, this middle portion. I like for this part to be really stiff right in here. That's where you get your hook set and power. Uh, I like a rod that has... Uh, a real stiff uh, area right here, and I like for it to taper down to a soft, fast tip. That's what I like. You see how it's bending right there like that, you know. That soft tip will uh, enable you to cast these large shiners that weigh, some of them weigh up close to a pound. And uh, it'll keep you from tearing the, uh, the, uh, their mouth up when you're casting them. A stiff tip, you're, you're going to end up tearing up their mouth. Also, that soft tip will help keep that hook in that bass's jaw better. So that works out well and also helps you with your casting. Uh, now for the reel. Uh, I've always used ambassador bait casting reels my whole career as a fishing guide. And uh, they're not making them as good as they used to. Uh, 
A lot of them uh, are made with cheap parts, and I just bought some here not too long ago from Bass Pro Shops. Uh, uh, I can't remember the model it was. I threw them away. Um, they had a thumb bar on them, but they just they were they were crap. You know, they 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 didn't last long at all. I mean, the gears started slipping in them when I was setting the hook, and I only fished them for about a month. Um, they were horrible reels, but. Um, a reel that's worked well for me, uh, it's a newer model, it's one of the ones that's held up well, is this uh, 6500 uh, Silver Series uh, with a clicker. Uh, I've had several of these reels. Um, I, I guess I've had one for about 15 years now, and uh, it's still holding up. And uh, it's got a good fast retrieve. Uh, it's durable, it's strong, it's got a big wide spool, you know, so you can hold either braid or mono. Uh, also, most important, it's got a clicker. It's very important to have that clicker. I like reels that have this, cl this clicker. Hear that right there. Because a lot of times when I'm uh, uh, fishing by myself or if I have one client, I'll put one rod down on the deck, especially if I'm trolling, and I can't watch it all the time uh, because I'll have another rod in my hand and my client will have a rod in his hand. But uh, if the shiner starts getting scared, you'll hear that clicker going off like that. Or if a bass grabs it, it'll just start going steady. And then you know, know to reach over there and grab it. But that's very important. Now, I know there's some other good reels out there, uh, but this is one that's worked really well for me. You know, All right, uh, the line. OK, um, I used to use a 25-pound trilene big game uh, mono for years and years and years, and I've caught a lot of big fish on it. But, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, but uh, over the years, I've gradually gone to braid. Uh, the first braided lines that came out weren't that great. Uh, spider wire was all the rage in the beginning. And uh, spider wire, it's a... Uh, it doesn't cast well, it kinks up real bad, and the reel knots up real bad, you can't see it, and um, uh, it, it's not that good a line for shiner fishing. I mean, it's spider wire, it's aptly named, it is like fishing with wire. But my favorite line is uh, Power Pro Braid and Moss Green. It's a limp, limp line, it's, it's a round limp line, it casts really well, holds up well. Uh, I like to use the 65 pound is what I like to use, which may seem pretty heavy, but with the thin braid, it's really, it's really not. It's the same line I use when I'm tarpon fishing, so it'll hold a big bass with no problem. But that line has worked well for me, and the reason that I really like the braid over the mono is it ha doesn't have stretch. The mono will stretch really bad. Back in some of my early videos, uh, some of my uh, uh, followers would tease me with my hook set because uh, if I was trolling, I had a bunch of line out there, I'd set the hook from back of the boat and almost like run to the front of the boat to get all the stretch out to get a hook set. They'd call it the, the epic hook set. Well, uh, back then I was experimenting with braid and mono to see which one I liked the best. Well, now I, I use almost exclusively braid uh, for all my fishing. Uh, the braid doesn't have any stretch and that helps you with really get really good solid hook sets. And you don't really even have to set the hook that hard. Actually, uh, you can actually straighten some of your hooks because it doesn't have any stretch. So I like to even, I'll back off the drag just a little bit. So when I set the hook, there'll be that little, little zzz at the end. You know, that's the way I like to you know, set the hook. That way uh, I don't uh, mess up, tear up my hooks. You know, but uh, it's great because Again, you don't have to have that hard of a hook set, you know, to uh, uh, hook them like, it, like I used to with the mono. But anyway, that's the type of line I like to use. Uh, and everything. Also, too, um, this braided line floats. It's very important to have your line float when you're shiner fishing because you don't want your line sinking down, getting caught in debris, and also it's going to be much easier for you to find that bass when you're tracking him down to get that slack out. So you need to have your line float. Back in the old days when we used mono, mono would sink, so we had to put fly line dressing on it to make it float. And that would gum up the guides and get stuck in the reel. It would be real messy. And, and with a braid with it floating, you don't have to do that. Uh, uh, but that's my favorite braided line, the 65-pound uh, Power Pro braid and moss green. That's worked really well for me. Even in clear water, it doesn't seem to make that much difference. You know? But that works really well. Okay, 
All right, now for the hooks. Uh, I use two types of hooks. Uh, <clears throat> I use a, 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 a Mustad hook. I use the number 92671-BR. That's one of my favorite hooks. It's an open style hook. Uh, yeah, it's an open style hook with a, a slight bend in it. And I use this hook mainly when I'm fishing floating cover, if I'm free lining shiners up under floating cover, or if I'm uh, float fishing relatively open water, uh, I'll use it. Uh, but that's a good hook, and I use them from uh, 3 aught all the way up to 5 aught. Uh, also, Eagle Claw makes a hook. Uh, I don't have the uh, number on me right now, but it makes they make a good uh, uh, open style J hook also. But that's my uh, one of my favorite hooks. I use it a lot. You know, uh, another hook that I use is the uh, the Eagle Claw uh, weedless hooks. And uh, I like to use the 5 aught model in 249 WA-5 aught. That's the one I like to use right there. And uh, that's what it looks like. That's the, the hook right there. And that's been a good hook for me over the years, uh, right there. I use that hook when I'm fishing um, uh, uh, medium, small to medium sized shiners. Now when I'm using uh, a larger shiner, I'll sometimes go to a 6 aught model. But uh, I like to use this hook when I'm trolling around edges of grass or I'm trolling over eel, uh, 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 hydrilla beds and I'm using a free line. If I'm uh, free line fishing like in rivers around uh, stumps and logs and pads and stuff, I like to use this hook right here. You know? But uh, again, you know, these are the hooks I like to use right there, guys. I like to use that mustad hook right there, and I like to use this weedless hook. The 5 aught to 6 aught in the weedless hook, and 3 aught to 5 aught in the, uh, uh, the open J hook. Now, uh, people ask me, well, why don't you use circle hooks for bass fishing when you're shiner fishing? Well, I use circle hooks almost exclusively when I'm bait fishing uh, saltwater. But with bass, um, a lot of times when they're spawning, you know, the best time is, you know, the January, February, March period, you know, April. You're going to have a lot of bass coming into the shallows spawning. And many times uh, they're going to be playing with the bait not, and not being real aggressive. And they're going to be at various different stages of the spawn. These fish, many times you have to use more finesse to hook them. They'll grab the bait, swim off a little bit, spit it and uh, sometimes they won't be real aggressive. Sometimes they are, sometimes they almost take the rod out of your hand, but many times you gotta be more finesseful. And I found out with the J hooks, uh, you can get better hook sets with them than, than you can the circle hooks. Circle hooks, you really need fish that are very aggressive and are swimming strong away from you. You know, but with, with, these, uh, with bass, you know, you need to use a little more finesse and I feel like I have more success with the, uh, the J hooks. All right, guys. Um, I think that's pretty much it on my terminal tackle. Uh, uh, as for floats, uh, there's a lot of floats that'll work. I like to use the styrofoam floats. I don't have one with me right now, but I like to use the styrofoam floats that have the little slit in the side and the little pegs on the end, and those work out really well. And I'll just put those on the line, and there's several size. I use the size that's about the shape of an egg for the big shiners, and then a the little bit smaller size for my medium to small shiners. But uh, anyway, guys, again, that's the tackle I like to use right there, you know. Also with this rod, I might have forgotten, you know, I like the, the, uh, the rods that have this long extended handle right here. This gives you tremendous leverage uh, when you're fighting a big bass. Also, again, I, I don't know if I remember to tell you in the first part of the video, I like the, the hand, I have a handle in front of the reel too. I don't like to palm the reel. Uh, I feel like I just don't have as much strength with these big reels and big rods. I like to grab the handle portion right in front, and that gives me more leverage, you know. So, but again, uh, I like a seven-foot rod, you know, with a long extended handle behind the reel. I like the handle portion in front where I can grab it. I like the rod, this part of the rod, all the way through to be very stiff and hardly bend at all. And I like to have that slowly go down to a soft, tip, soft, fast tip. Yep.
that's the rod right there. You know, the rods I use, I've had these rods. These are uh, they're not real expensive rods. They're about a fifty dollar rod. Uh, they're Berkeley Big Game Power Series. It's actually a two piece rod, but I never take them apart. But they've worked really well for me. I've been using these rods for about 15, 20 years, probably close to 20 years now. And uh, I've got a whole bunch of them, and uh, I've only broken two in 20 years, which is pretty good, you know. But they're a strong, durable rod, and uh, they can take a beating. And just like this reel, this 6500 S. Uh, Ambassador Abu Garcia reel, silver, with the clicker. Uh, it's done really well for me also. All right, guys, that's the tackle I like to use. And I guarantee you, if you use this type of tackle, you're going to catch more of those big trophy bass. All right, guys, I hope you all learned a lot from this video. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel, The North Florida Angler. Until next time, tight lines, good fishing, and we'll see you out in the water.